Hudson's Bay. The saga of the great Hudson's Bay Fur Company. And of the brave men who traveled the untrekked wilderness from Labrador to California, from Minnesota to Alaska. Starring Barry Nelson as Jonathan Banner, Hudson's Bay Man. With George Tobias as Pierre Falcone. Dangers in the Northwest country came in a dozen ways. Animal bite, then blood poisoning, rattle and dart of a snake, the silent hush of an Indian's arrow. It was late summer when Pierre Falcone and I were ordered by the Hudson's Bay Company to one of their trading posts in the Great Peninsula region. Southwest. Something was happening which was to have a great effect on me. His name was Montgomery Velvet. Dueling was his avocation men like myself, whose job it was to keep the peace, became his adversaries. growling behind a rock over that way. Yes. Well, I couldn't shoot him straight. Uh, my only chance was to bounce the ball off the wall to hit him in the side. How can you do that? <laughs> Be quiet. So very carefully I figure out which way the ball will bounce after I hit the wall. So very exact. I take aim. I hold my breath. I fire. Did you hit the bear? Well, well, I really could have, except I missed the wall. You will excuse me, sir. Is there a place to stay here? Oh, down the street. Boy, take my bag and care for the horse. Will he give it back? But it's silver. Give it back. Oh, there's no need to do that. For politeness, monsieur, he will take care of your horse. Will he? Perhaps you could tell me, sir, where I might find Mr. Jonathan Banner. Oh, I will take you to him. Will he? Take care of the horse. Don't tell me you're still finding those horrible account books interesting. As a matter of fact, uh, yes. Your father had a very good season. If you only knew how I was looking forward to your visit, and all you do is sit in here. Aren't there any other men on the post? I'm not interested in any of them. I don't know if you've noticed it, Joanna, but I'm getting older and fatter. Listen. Oh, you are. Well, that's very generous of you. When I proposed to you at 8 and again at 12, I didn't expect you to be serious. But I'm not a child anymore, Jonathan. I can see that. Well, then. 
Well, you know, my mind keeps going back to that time when you were eight. Oh, you were very cute then. I remember. I remember. You had just lost your baby teeth. John, listen. Johnny, there's someone to see you. Mr. Jonathan Banner. Yes? Yeah? Montgomery Velvet, at your service, sir. How do you do? Uh, may I present Mr. Joanna Balfour? Your servant, Miss Balfour. Can I uh, help you, Mr. Velvet? Not just at the moment, Mr. Banner. I just wanted to meet you first. Oh. Yes, I've heard quite a lot about you, Mr. Banner. And I must say, after such a long journey, I'm not very much impressed. You know, you have quite an ugly face, Mr. Banner. Oh. Well, they say I was a very pretty baby. Now, we'll talk later. Now, if you'll excuse me, Miss Balfour. What a perfectly horrid man. Johnny, I don't think you have an ugly face. Well, it seems to be a controversial subject. Did you notice the case he was carrying under his arm? Uh, uh, if you'll both excuse me, I've got a lot of work to do. Johnny, I don't like the looks of him. Well, he doesn't like the looks of me, so we're even. Seasons. I'm not complaining. Isn't it all you men can talk about? Jonathan, have you seen what a beautiful night it is out there? No, I hadn't noticed. You wouldn't like to take a walk? Well, it's uh, getting rather dark. Aren't you afraid? I haven't been afraid since I was little. Don't you remember the night when you and Father took me for a walk through the woods without a lantern? Each noise we heard, you told me what it was. And ever since then, I'm not afraid. What a charming story. Come in, Mr. Velvet. I'm sorry to disturb your little party, sir, but I'd like a few words with Mr. Banner. Won't you join us, then? Oh, I think discretion demands that we have them in private, sir. Factor Balfour and his daughter are very close friends of mine. I haven't any secrets from them. Very well, as you wish. We have business together. Business? Yes, frankly, I regret it. You seem an agreeable enough fellow. Nothing personal, of course. What isn't? I regret that I shall have to duel with you. What? Duel with me over what? For me, it's always open season on country style heroes. I hope you'll play your part like a man. Mr. Velvet, I don't kill for sport. And as you credit, sir. Well, Mr. Banner, you have been challenged. I don't accept your challenge. Human life isn't some sort of toy you play with at games. Now, I suggest you get out of here before I get really mad. Of course, sure, if you're vulgar enough to insist on fisticuffs, I've no doubt I can dispose of you in that way, too. But I am a gentleman, Mr. Banner, and I prefer pistols. I'm not going to play your game, and you're not going to provoke me into it. Well, tomorrow or the next day, I shall arrange it so that you have no choice. Nothing personal, you understand. Good evening, everybody. There's something strangely evil about that man. If it had been me, Jonathan, I'd have let him have it. I'll have him run off the post first thing in the morning. It isn't worth the trouble. Just forget about it. Johnny, you should have knocked him down. He's just gotten up again. You could knock him down again. Oh, I think we've got a game. Jonathan, I don't like the look of him. Well, uh, you won the last one, and I think I'm entitled to another chance. You may be wondering, my friends, what my profession is. Well, I shall tell you. My profession, I measure men. You are Mr. Banner, for instance. I'm told he cuts a great figure here. So I'm obliged to measure him. Oh, I've no doubt he's done some great deeds for a country bumpkin. 
But he is a bumpkin, first and last. And I'm a gentleman, you see. There's a difference there. Ah, yonder he comes, radiant as a bridegroom. I believe you're late to work, Mr. Banner. Haven't you faded away yet? I hope they're not loaded. You might hurt yourself. Your reputation is at stake, Mr. Banner. I'm not going to fight you, Velvet. Now, if you don't mind, I got a lot of work to do. I'm afraid I'm going to have to provoke you, sir. There's a lot of work in that. I thought so. Choose a weapon, sir. My, those are magnificent furs. You mind if I look at one? Oh, I do believe it's slipping out of my hands. You sure it was quite dead, Mr. Banner? Choose a weapon, sir. Get out of here. I'm having trouble measuring you, Mr. Banner. You just won't stand up for it. Well, haven't you got any work to do? I don't like to have to tell you this, but the men are talking. They think you're afraid of Velvet. What do you think? I don't know what to think, Jonathan. It's a question of your whole position here, of your usefulness to the company. If you lose face, so does Hudson's Bay. You want me to kill him? I didn't say that exactly. But you think that? You've killed before. Yes, in defense of... Of life, not for pride. You have a name among us, Jonathan. The people expect certain things of you. What? Entertainment? A gunfight now and then to break up the dull season? Mr. Velvet is making a fool out of you. They expect you to have some self-respect. Self-respect? Oh, is that, is that how you get it? You're not afraid of him, are you, Johnny? What do you think? Oh, I know you're not. But that's what some of the men are saying. A new factor. Are you one of those? I don't know. Well, guess there's nothing further to talk about. I, I came here to do a job. I guess I better get to it. Monsieur, do not, do not judge my friend Johnny too harshly. He's not a man like you or me. I have seen him think twice about swatting a fly. And when he had to, I have seen him take on five men at once. Come in, my dear. I'm so glad you could come. I wasn't sure that you got my message. What is it you want? Would you prefer sherry or port? I don't make a habit of coming to gentlemen's rooms, so if you could tell me what was so important. I hope you don't mind if I indulge. Your Mr. Banner is a pretty poor sort of hero. I don't have much appetite for killing that kind of coward. Perhaps he'll kill you. Oh, haven't you heard about me? Yes. I've heard the men talking. You know, you're really very pretty. I hadn't expected to meet anyone like you out here. I understand that you have a fondness for Mr. Banner. What do you want? Would you like me to spare him? 
I could be persuaded to pack up and ride off, leaving the gentleman intact. And you have your price, no doubt. Why, of course. Doesn't everyone? What is your price, Mr. Velvet? You really are very naive. I'd say that was a very high price. That depends how much you think of Mr. Banner. I should slap your face. To be perfectly honest, it wouldn't be the first time. Well, I'll expect your decision within the hour. Montreal is very lovely at this time of year. I think you'd enjoy it. Don't be too sure of yourself. <laughs> You, Johnny? Oh, I was coming along fine. Johnny. Yeah. When do you think you finish? Oh, in a few days. Well, maybe if I help you, we can finish today and we can leave tonight. What's the big hurry? Mr. Montgomery Velvet. That is the big hurry. Will you stop worrying about him? Nothing's going to happen because I'm not going to fight him. Monsieur. How can you sit there and let him insult you the way he does? You really want me to let him have it, don't you? He deserves it, Johnny. He's a bad man, I hear from the other men. He has killed many others. Maybe he has, but I'm not the judge and the jury, the executioner. All he's done is to insult me. Now, I can't kill a man for that. Besides, he'll give up and go away in a few days. Don't look at me like that, Pierre. Look, let me tell you something. It's a lot easier to take a man's insults than to take a man's life for no good reason. Jonathan, you better come quickly. Joanna's packing. She's going to leave. Well, what's it all about? She's going off with Mr. Velvet. You shocked? Oh, I don't shock easy. It's just that I got tired of waiting for you, Jonathan. When this opportunity presented itself, well, I thought I'd better take it. Girl's got to look out for her future, you know. Yes, yes, I've... Heard that. Well, uh, when when do you leave? Mr. Velvet's packing. You'll be here soon. You know, somehow I don't see you and Velvet as a twosome. Well, you've got to get to know Monty. Monty? Who is Monty? Montgomery Velvet. Oh, him. We're going to Montreal. I hear it's quite beautiful there at this time of year. Yes, yes, it is. I'm sure you'll enjoy yourself. Jonathan? Yes. I'm so glad you're not trying to talk me out of it, because it wouldn't do any good. I know. If you're ever out east, I hope you'll come visit us. Thank you, Joanna. For what? I'm really very flattered. I don't understand. You can help her start to unpack. She's not going to leave now. Now, listen here, Jonathan. I haven't changed my mind. No, but I have. Pardon my not knocking. One has to overlook certain things when one is in the country. Yes, it must be very trying for a gentleman out here. I believe, Mr. Banner, you have something on your mind. Does it show? Just barely. I hope you haven't packed your pistols, Mr. Velvet. What am I to take that question to indicate? What do you think it indicates? So you found the courage at last, have you? I found something. A reason? A cause? Yes. For sure kind needs that. You ought to know. What has the lady told you? Nothing. Nothing? Sometimes that tells everything. You know, Mr. Banner, this is one encounter I'm going to enjoy to the utmost. I shall relish this victory for years. Because I know it'll be most appetizing to defeat such a worthy adversary. For you are most worthy, my good sir. 
Indeed, you're a hero in the true classical tradition, rising to the defense of a damsel's honor. Indeed. When do we begin? When else? At dawn. Oh, yes. That's right. I shall still take her away afterwards. Now, there won't be any need for her to go anywhere now after this is over, no matter how it comes out. No. Pity. Montreal will seem quite lonely without her. Mr. Velvet, I must say... Oh, please. Call me Monte, won't you? You, uh... You seem very sure of yourself. Haven't they told you my record? No. Eighteen victories. No defeats. Very impressive. Until the dawn. Until then, sir. to hide in the bushes and shoot him in the back. Well, Mr. Banner, shall we begin? Are both parties ready? Mr. Banner has the choice of weapons. One, two, three, four, five. Johnny, Johnny, you all right? Yeah, just, just the shoulder. Mr. Velvet is dead. You've won, Jonathan.
We buried Montgomery Velvet and started back to Ghana. Sometimes I wonder if the killing will ever stop. For men should not kill each other. They should wait for God to take them. <laughs>